there's so many of you mm-hmm. tuning in who probably are having labiaplasty, you have it scheduled, and you need to know like how the heck do I get ready for this thing. So today we're going to yeah. talk about the five things you need to do to prepare for your labiaplasty. Hi guys, I am Dr. Ashley Amalfi and I want to welcome you to Lipstick and Lipo, your unfiltered guide to plastic surgery. I am joined today by my co-host and friend, Dr. Smitta in New Jersey. Hi girly. Hi, how are you? I'm so good. You know, this is labiaplasty month. You guys know it. We're talking about it. All things labiaplasty and um, today's a good one because there's so many of you Mm -hmm. tuning in who probably are having labiaplasty, you have it scheduled and you need to know like how the heck do I get ready for this thing. So today we're going to talk about the five things you need to do to prepare for your labiaplasty. Yeah, I mean this is such a good one because I think preparation is so important just to sort of set... It's going to make it this you so up for much success. easier. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. All right, girl, you start it. What's the big one? What do you want to say uh, first? Right. Well, so I think the first thing in how to prepare, um, so first is to wear loose clothing, right? Yeah. I mean, when you go into your procedure, I we you know my office always tells everyone, wear sort of just like loose sweatpants. Yes. Definitely don't. This is not the time to wear your cute Lululemon, like yoga pants, and you know, tight even though jeans. that might be what you lounge around in, tight jeans, high waisted no, jeans. The looser, no. the better. <laughs> yeah, the looser, yeah. the better. Like your granny, like period underwear. You know, like, yes. I feel like every every woman has period underwear. Yeah. Um, not, wear that. Not your just... favorites. Yeah, we're not. We do not need to be impressed. <laughs> no lace. You need to be comfortable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No lace, no thongs, like just keep it very basic. Yeah. No um, thongs. And loose. That's good. Most, cause we're going to put a lot of gauze in there. It's going to be like, you have like a yes. little bit like a diaper on cause we're going to put a lot of gauze in <laughs> yes. your underwear. So you don't want anything you like. You certainly don't want anything like cute and light colored. You want dark colors so that if things no. are a little bleedy, yes. um, you don't see them. They're dark. You know, think of this as like an awful mm. period. Um, and what would yeah. you prepare to, to wear for that? So that's so good. Um, <laughs> exactly. I love that. All right, I'm going to say the second one. The second thing I think you need to prepare, and this is totally patient-driven. Every single patient who goes through labiaplasty tells me the best thing they did was use ice. So people who have labiaplasty are obsessed yes. with ice. It is so helpful for the pain. Um, and mm-hmm. it's kind of like uh, when guys have vasectomies, right? Don't they like always talk about um, how they ice. ice it and it feels so much more comfortable. Ice it like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had patients like, this is how effective icing is guys. I've had patient, like not, patients not even use any sort of pain medications cause just ice. the ice yeah. just felt so good. Um, and obviously you want to use ice safely, right? You're not going to just sit on it and leave it there indefinitely. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. going like, to, off, on, off. you know, yeah. on, on, off. Um, so you don't cause damage to that skin. Um, but ice is really going to be a game changer, not only for the discomfort, but also for the swelling, right? It um, really helps. There's a yeah, lot of I, swelling awesome. after the procedure. So it, um, it yeah. helps a ton. So like helps frozen peas, like sometimes really small vegetables because they kind of squish around and can conform to the shape. People say, you know, frozen peas are really good. Um, I've had mm-hmm. women who do this thing where they um, freeze a wet diaper and then it becomes like, you know, the diaper, they just kind of like lay over the area and that's like a giant oh. soothing. Yeah, I know. I, apparently this I is know. A, I'm like, that's this interesting. Is, yeah. I haven't heard that one yet. <laughs> apparently like it's a, it's like an old wives tale after you have a child. No one ever told me that. So I was, you know, schooled <laughs> on that one, but it sounds great and people really like it. And I'll tell them about that. Um, or like those gel ones that have the little beads in them yeah. that you could probably grab on mm-hmm. Amazon. People order those just because they really conform. Um, you know, mm-hmm. we send them home with our little um, refreezable ones, which are small, which yeah, are also kind of nice. Because then you can just mm-hmm. tuck them in your underwear. So I would say options. Have options because you'll try to figure have out options. which one works for you. Um, and, yeah. you know, 
then you you have frozen vegetables so they won't go to waste <laughs> but <laughs> exactly yes ice. i'm not sure you want to put that down there yeah but <laughs> maybe you throw that one out but you know you've got it it's probably oh, yeah. not very expensive yeah, throw it out after to throw off done. some frozen peas uh, but um okay exactly so ice um, what so, you, yeah. what's, so what's that's the ice. third one what is the th- what do you think so the third third one i would say are the period pads right i mean yes the really thick period pads that maybe you use when you first got your period yes. ages ago I love and it. you have since stopped using them. Um, yes. Those are the ones you want to stock up on um, because that cushion does help. And obviously you have fresh incisions there, so it's it going to be a little stick. oozy and yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't stick to your clothes. Um, we have you put ointment over those incisions, so it gets sort of like goopy you know yes. so the pads are just sort of perfect um for that the, area i think at least you know initially in the first week or so you know the other thing that my patients really like is aquaphor or you know vaseline yes. gel and we just put that mm-hmm. all along the stitches and keep it really gooped up um and then yeah. you and then you stick the period pad to that and that just keeps everything like really i know people hate the word moist but it does it keeps it really moist which makes yeah. the stitches heal really well and it's almost like soothing mm-hmm. so you know right. stock up yeah. on aquaphor and period pads um the other thing that we usually give patients and i know you guys have talked about this too big thing is a spray bottle so like after you have kids mm-hmm. and you and you have to pee you do that little squirt bottle so that things don't burn um have you yes. found that this is really helpful for people too smita oh i think yeah absolutely i mean i think you what you don't want to be doing is going to the bathroom and wiping right i mean that a just yeah. really traumatizes the tissue but you also risk then you know the stitches opening up and it's just more trauma to that area yeah just clean um, with it. just yeah. toilet paper that you think is just so benign um when there's no nothing going on down there but obviously you want to avoid that so the spray bottle just really helps keep everything nice and clean um and yeah. you know so that you can recover well so i think that's that's really the one of the most important things that i tell people the aquaphor yeah. i mean j- just like what you said the aquaphor the pads and spray bottle if yeah. you have those three things, you're sort of all set. Yeah. And I would say like the last yeah. thing that like the fifth mm-hmm. thing to prepare is to just have some over the counter medications ready. So like Tylenol yeah. and ibuprofen, because, you know, sometimes we'll give you narcotics, but usually not a ton for a procedure like this. You're going to rely mm-hmm. on over the counter stuff and you just want to have it ready to go. So Tylenol, you're going to be able to start right away. And then as long as you're not yep. bleeding after a few days, right, I would let you try ibuprofen. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I would just have a bottle of both of those because, you know, at the end of the day, especially when you get back to work and stuff, you might be really sore. And so you might go through right. some of those meds a little bit quickly. So it's probably a good idea to stock up on both of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's important to sort of keep in mind that you're sort of expecting to be uncomfortable right after yeah. the procedure, right? But then... This is often what catches people off guard is you start to feel better as you're healing and then you start doing more and then you start feeling uncomfortable again. And that's just because you're increasing your activity and that's all normal part of healing. Um, And so having these things on hand at home is always just, it's good to have options just in case you're having some extra discomfort. Um, You got it. You guys are going to be so prepared. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> I know you're going to be overly prepared, which you, I mean, I always feel like yeah. if you're not overly prepared, you're not prepared, right? So yeah. It's and better to thing, be overly prepared. Yeah. I mean, and the last thing we wanted to tell you guys is make sure you have some time off. So you don't want to do this yes. and rush back to work because you're going to stand or sit at your job and you're going to get swollen and you're going to be miserable. So make sure you yes. build in a little time off. Like a week would be amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. even like five days I think is significant so you know take it seriously give yourself a little time to heal and if you just Mm -hmm. lay down and do all these things and use all these little tricks that we taught you to prepare you're gonna you're gonna do awesome 
yeah, you're going to do awesome and you're going to love your results. Um, so I hope this was helpful for yeah, all of you guys that so have good. labioplasty on your schedule or are thinking about it. Um, and, uh, this is always a fun topic for us because I think that, you know, it's, there's a lot to talk about and not a lot of information out there. So guys, we've got some more great questions answered on labioplasty. So make sure you follow along for the rest of our series. Subscribe, Lipstick and, you, uh, Lipstick and Lipo on YouTube and Spotify. You'll find us there. So uh, we'll hope to see you next week. See you guys. <laughs>